I gotta do now is hack into the mainframes and then we're good. No, we're almost there. Alright, I think we're there. Oh yeah, perfect. Yo, what is up, Team AGU? It's John Walks, and today, today back at again with another video, guys, and it's Scripture Sunday. Let me take out this jacket, bro, because it's cold outside, but in here, because of uh, the sun and stuff, it's hot, so I'm taking this off real quick. Hold up. Okay. This thing has premium insulation, so, uh-uh, not trying to heat out here to trying to get heated up today. All right, you guys, so today is Scripture Sunday. Every Sunday we have Scripture from the amazing Word of God, and I break it down so it can help your life today, guys. And today is actually a very script, uh, special Scripture Sunday because it's a little different format, you know. A little, when I say different format, I'm not using just one Scripture and then breaking it down. I'm actually doing a little topic, if you, as you can see, um, if you didn't see by the title, you know. But if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'm going to explain it. But anyways, guys, Scripture Sunday, so let's head right into it. So guys, today's topic is WWJD, WWJD, and if you don't know what that means, it's okay, you may have seen it before, you may have seen those letters before, but before you, before you watch this video, before you pause the video, comment down below what you think it means, don't skip forward, just think, comment down below what you think it means, well basically, the scripture, or not the scripture, but the, what WWJD means is what would Jesus do? WWJD means what would Jesus do? And today I'm going to give you four things, four things on what Jesus did and how it can help us today. We, When we say what would Jesus do, it may be in our everyday lives. We may encounter something weird or encounter something that's it has to have God in it, and we always, I always ask the question, what would Jesus do in this situation right now? And guess what? That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you four things that we face throughout the day. So let's get right into it. So the four things I'm going to talk about today is what would Jesus do about anxiety? What would Jesus do about trouble and offense? What would Jesus do about temptation? And what would Jesus do about witnessing? Those are the four things I'm talking about today. So the first one is what would Jesus do about anxiety? And we're going to take a look at Matthew 26. So this part is coming from Matthew 26, 36 through 30. Nine. I'll say it again. It's coming from Matthew 26, 36 to 39. I'm going to read a little verse. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. But yeah, let's go ahead and grind right to it. So this is uh, when Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. And basically, it goes like this. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking it with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is sor very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. All right, let's go ahead and break that little thing right down right there. So guys, in this chapter, Jesus is getting ready to die on the cross, right? He, is, he knows it's going to be painful, right? He's getting ready to die on the cross. He knows it's going to be painful. This is just right where he's going to turn himself in, and he's going to get turned into the guards, and all that process and stuff. And he's God, right? He is God. He is 100% God, but he's also 100% man, too. He has a flesh. He is in a human body. So it says he was sorrowful and troubled. Those are things that we feel today. And you watching this video, you may be feeling sorrowful or troubled, troubled for anything. You might know there's a situation that's going to be ahead of you. You may be sorrowful trouble for a test. No matter what it is, there is someone in the world right now where they feel like that. And this is a what did Jesus do moment. What did he do at that moment? What did Jesus do when he felt anxiety? What did he do when he felt kind of sorrowful and trouble? He prayed to God. He prayed to God. He didn't blame God. He wasn't like, he didn't run away. He didn't do all that. No, he went to God when he felt anxiety. In prayer, you see and hear what God says. And wherever you feel like Jesus in that moment, you may feel kind of trouble. You may feel kind of sorrowful or weird. Go to God. It said he fell on his face and he prayed. Pray to God. Whatever, you, whatever feeling, you may feel anxiety or fear. Whatever you may feel. Oh, that was a tough question. Whatever you may feel, pray to God. Go to God. And prayer is like a just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and God. And guys, I also want to point this out too. I just realized it. Is that there's a scripture, 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. In that moment, the feelings that Jesus felt, he cast everything that he felt on God. He prayed to God and it helped him. Just like it can help you.
So that's what would Jesus do about anxiety. Okay, so what would Jesus do about trouble or offense? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at Mark 2, 15 through 17. Mark chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. So let's get into it. So what would Jesus do about trouble and offense? What would do what would Jesus do if somebody was offensive to him or he they said something rude? Well look let's look let's look at this. So Mark chapter two verses fifteen through seventeen. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with sin the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat? And, tax, and ate with tax collectors and sinners. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is, not health, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Oh yeah, let's go Jesus. So guys, you might be wondering, who are the Pharisees? It says like the Pharisees. Well, the Pharisees were spiritual leaders. You know, they were all about God and the Moses and the scriptures and things like that. But they, Jesus did not like them at all. This is a bunch of, this is not just the first encounter Jesus had with the Pharisees. Jesus had many encounters with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were pretty much anybody, any Christian that would read the Bible, they would think that the Pharisees are annoying. They always came on Jesus' back. They were always trying to shut him down. They were always trying to just make him feel or trying to cause something to rouse up or just be offensive well we encounter pharisees in our life all the time and they're always nagging at us they're always throwing offense so what would jesus do about offense what would jesus do about this thing when people are trying to offend them offend him and just not just try to call something right what would he do well this is nice like i said this is a many encounters for jesus many, jesus encountered the pharisees so many times throughout his just time of witnessing and spreading the gospel in his time beyond earth well guess what he did jesus spoke the truth jesus spoke the truth and he didn't join in the offense jesus just spoke the truth he taught a lesson in it and he moved on in matthew 12 the pharisees the Pharisees called Jesus a Beelzebub. A Beelzebub. Basically, Jesus was saw, I think it was a man or somebody, and he casted out a demon out of them, right? And everybody was amazed and astonished and things like that. But then the Pharisees saw it and they were like, this is a Beelzebub. This isn't, this isn't good. It's a Beelzebub. Be pretty much a Beelzebub is like, you know, it sounds funny, but it's like an evil spirit. Something that's not good. You know, something that's from the enemy, right? Well, Jesus wasn't like, don't call me that. Let me show you who's really, let me, he didn't prove try to boot himself or anything. He didn't do anything. He didn't engage. He just taught a lesson out of it. He said, he was telling them some things, right? Right? But he didn't join in it. He didn't engage with it. He didn't get the response that they were expecting. He taught a lesson out of it and he moved on. Every time he responded with truth and he moved on. On. An offense's goal is to push you and try to aggravate you. If somebody tries to offend you, they may say something rude, they may try to roast you or something like that. And, uh, you know, they may try to offend you. They're trying to get a thing out of you. They're trying to make you mad. They're trying to get you out of your character and things like that. Well, but we miss the thing that we miss is that we can go on with our lives. We don't have to engage with offense. So the answer to this, what would Jesus do about offense and stuff, is that he responded with truth. And he moved on. So you today, whenever you're offended, whenever somebody tries to aggravate you or try to push something or try to just stir up something in you, in you, don't respond with anger. Don't respond with hate. Just respond with truth and move on. Hey, so what would Jesus do about temptation? Another great question. What would Jesus do about temptation? What would Jesus do about temptation? This is the thing. We are tempted to do something. We may be tempted to, I don't know, lust. We may be tempted uh, to... Uh, offend somebody you know we may be tempted uh to fight back or we may be tempted to eat more food i know it was just thanksgiving and stuff like that but there is sometimes we're tempted to eat food and we may be tempted to be angry well what did jesus do about temptation and this is actually jesus was actually tempted directly by the enemy well, if you would flip with me to matthew chapter now nah, i'm like one of the passages now nah. but if you would flip with me to matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through Four. You don't have to. You don't have. You can if you want to. I'm putting on the screen for you. So Matthew chapter four verses one through four, and it's basically Jesus goes like this. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. All right, let's go ahead and get right to that. So Jesus was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the enemy. And when the enemy attacked Jesus with something in the flesh, 
Jesus relied on the Spirit. Notice how when the devil was like, okay, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to be bread, right? Jesus was like, okay, I guess so. I mean, I can, I am God. I, I mean, I mean, I am the Son of God, so I can turn these into bread. I am hungry. I've been fasting, fasting 40 days before now. I think I deserve some bread. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus relied on the Spirit. He fought back with the Word of God. Literally, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says, th Jesus says this to Peter. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was hungry. His flesh was pretty much kind of just weak. You know, he was probably a little bit skinnier than he was. He was probably just not in his full, um, you know, when you're hungry, you're not in your complete strong self, right? He was kind of weak in the flesh, but he was strong in the spirit. That's what fasting is. You're getting stronger in the spirit. So uh, he had been fasting four days and Friday night, but Jesus referred to the scripture, scripture. Even when the devil tempted him with something that he knew he wanted, right? He was hungry. Jesus relied on the spirit and he fought back with the word. He didn't fight back with the flesh because even though it was a fleshly attack, it was going to be a spiritual consequence. But Jesus was like, no, I already know that I'm a son of God. I don't need to prove anything to you. I am. This, I already know I am. And I already know I am inside. So no, I will not do this. It is written, man shall not live by bread and low, but everywhere I see that from mouth of God. And Jesus tempted, I mean, the devil tempted Jesus three times. Thrice. thrice. Jesus tempted, uh, the devil tempted Jesus three times. However, guess what? The enemy left after the third try. Jesus was like, get away from me, Satan. I don't know that, none of that, no. And basically, what we can learn from this, what did Jesus do about temptation? We rely on the Spirit and fight back with Scripture. Remember the Word of Spirit? Mm, mm. Fight back with the Spirit. Fight back with the Word. Let's go. And last but not least, let's check out what would Jesus do about witnessing. All right, so this one, we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And it goes like this. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, this is actually Jesus himself speaking. So when we think, talk about witnessing, right? We talk about witnessing all the time. Jesus never forced himself on anyone. Not in the bed, never talking about Jesus never forced him. He never said, I am I am uh, Jesus, you have to obey me, you have to follow me. No, he never did that. One time in the Bible in Matthew 5, Jesus saw multitudes. So he went on top of a mountain, right? He went on top of a mountain and he went to a mountain to speak to them. And he just spoke with them. He taught them the Beatitudes. He taught them so many great lessons. The scriptures that we know and love today are from that sermon on some on that time when he was on the mountain speaking to the multitude and jesus saw an opportunity opportunity to spread the gospel he saw an opportunity he saw all those multitudes he saw those people following him so he's like you know what i'm gonna go on a mountain and i'm gonna spread the gospel i'm gonna go on a mountain and i'm gonna spread some truth and he took that opportunity like jesus there will be opportunity to win there's so many times at school at um wherever you work uh at the playground playing basketball wherever you are even just at the store there are so many opportunities to witness and jesus says go therefore and make disciples of all nations not just your friends not just family but from every race everybody make disciples of people outside of your inner circle and jesus says he is with you when you're witnessing it's not just you it's like jesus being right beside you and he's just like He's right beside you just talking with them too. It's not just you. He's with you always. And guys, guess what? One of Jesus' disciples, Peter, actually in the Bible, he says this. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. He says, he pretty much says this. He pretty much says, be prepared to witness. Be prepared to witness. Be prepared to share the gospel with everyone and anyone, but do it with gentleness and respect. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus responded with gentleness and respect. He spread the gospel with gentleness and respect. He didn't force himself. He didn't hate on anyone. No, he spread the gospel with gentleness and respect. And that's what we do today. Even Peter himself, he went back. He probably looked back and he's probably like, you know, he probably like, what did Jesus do in this moment? What did Jesus do when he was witnessing? And everybody so on forth, we can look at Jesus for what he's done. And we can look at, we can look at him as an example because he's our savior. He's in our hearts. So yeah, guys, the best way, guys, the best way to see topics about Jesus and how Jesus handles stuff is in the Bible, guys. Read this book, especially the New Testament. Look at what Jesus did. Look about what he did. I, I'm highlighting. I highlight stuff, man. I highlight the things so I can help myself just to, you know, throughout the day, man. Also, too, if you don't know where to start, look it up online. Just look up. Go on Google and just type, uh, look 
look up uh what did jesus do about anxiety what did jesus do about fear what did jesus say about um temptation what did jesus say about this stuff and guess what and guess what it's gonna help you guys i promise you that so yeah guys that's gonna wrap up today's video hope you guys enjoyed if you did i hope that you would give this video a like if you're new to the channel i encourage you to subscribe and when you subscribe make sure to turn whoa that was voice crack when you subscribe make sure to comment down below so i can give you a shout out because it really does mean a lot when you guys um subscribe i want to give you a shout out and speaking of shout outs i actually have one today I want to give a shout out to my boy Jacob. His actual YouTube name is Patriotic Shorts. He and I go way back. I say you go way back. From elementary school. We used to um, go to this after school thing. And it was really fun. So shout out to him. Thank you so much for subscribing, bro. It means a whole lot to me. So yeah, guys. Feel free to go check my website, GilesBooks.com. If you'd like to go purchase one of my books. You're subscribers, but you're also family. Stay positive. Stay happy. And remember, never give up. I'll see you all next time. Peace.